Hi everybody, this is part 6 of my Mini Cooper S blown engine video. In this part, we continue to reassemble the engine. So we'll flip it back over. We'll be putting the pistons into the cylinders. So this is not the best tool to do this. This is what I was able to find for a reasonable price. And basically you put the piston in, squish it down, and then shove it on in. So I'll grab piston number one here. On the top there's these little eyelets with the indentation where the valve fits. And one side is a little bit deeper than the other side. Uh, the intake valves are larger, so we want to make sure that the larger indentation is facing towards the intake valve side. And I'm going to double and triple check this about a hundred times. We also want to make sure the rings are still clocked. They tend to move around during the assembly. And then we'll get a, a whole bunch of oil on here. And we'll put the piston into the tool. Kind of squish the rings to get them to go in. And be sure to take off the connecting rod bottom cap. And also on this one there's numbers here. You want to make sure that you have it, uh, when you put it back on, you put it on the correct orientation. Get it all nice and tight. And then we drop it on into the block here. And we'll tap it on in using the bottom end of a hammer. There it goes. I'll just leave it like that for now. I'll go come back afterwards and uh, do them all up to the connecting rods to the uh, crankshaft. Hey there. Want some snacks? I've got a helper who showed up. Who's that? You. All right, so we got all the pistons in. We've rotated the block and we're starting to assemble the, the connecting rod uh, bottom caps. I just kind of push up on the piston until it connects to the uh, crankshaft here. They got this special lube for these race bolts. I put that on the threads and on the head and we'll start tightening them down. The torque value for these are 25 foot-pounds and then turn an additional 55 degrees. All right, so we'll torque to 25, which is not a lot. And then I need to go find something to measure 55 degrees. So I'm a cheapskate. I don't got the fancy tool, so we're using a chunk of cardboard and a protractor. 55. Okay, 55 degrees. It's actually really tight. That feels like about 80 foot-pounds. So the connecting rod bolt is really the weakest part of any engine. It takes the most most um, punishment. Boy, that is tight. There we go. The piston clearance is like four thousandths of an inch because they expand to, to fit into the bore. Yeah, they feel loose right now, but they're not when the engine's running. Just kind of cool, and that's also why you need to warm up a motor before you you drive it hard. Okay, I got to put these oil jets in before I forget. So they go down here. Boy, that clearance, man, that thing is just flying right past here. They don't have any uh, set points to keep them from moving around, which is kind of weird. And if you put it anywhere else, it can contact parts in here that's not supposed to contact, and they'll get dented up and fall into the oil pan. So I'm gonna, after installing them, I'm going to rotate the crank through and make sure nothing's hitting. Now that one's hitting, so i got to back it off. Well, this is a tight motor. When I took it apart, I could just push this by hand easy. On the upstroke, it's just barely, barely, barely not touching the edge of the piston skirt. Oh, I see. Oh. On the downstroke, yeah, it's it's just barely. If I turn it too far, it actually hits the connecting rod. <laughs> so it's got to fit in that little tiny gap. And I got to make sure when the metal expands, it's not going to hit either. Because if these fall off, you're not getting your pistons cooled. So I'm running it through all the way just to make sure. Boy, that is tight tolerance. Okay, that one's lined up exactly where it needs to be. And it's probably good that I'm putting the oil jets in now. If I tried to do that before, they would, they would never have lined up. Starting to make progress. Now we can start bolting on the accessory bits. This is the oil uh, filter housing and oil cooler. Well, this is nice having an engine uh, stand. Last motor I did this, I was squatting on the floor. That's the whole uh, bottom end, I think. Let's put the oil pan on. 
now we're getting into territory where I've done stuff before, just never with the engine upside down before. I like to do two, three passes as the gasket compresses, just so it doesn't uh, doesn't come loose later on. I think now we can uh, start doing the fun part, putting the cylinder head back on. So I've already gone through and uh, cleaned up the block. I've already uh, took a scraper and make sure there's no foreign substance here at all to interfere with the head gasket sealing. And we've got ARP racing head studs instead of the regular head bolts. So we'll thread the studs in all the way. All right, getting to the fun part. We'll put the head gasket on. This is a modern metal layer sandwich gasket with a printed surface. You don't need to put copper RTV on it. It just goes on just like that. All right, let's put this head on. There it goes. It's coming together pretty fast. Well, now it is. Now I know what I'm doing. Okay, so got all the bolts cinched down most of the way. These are 40 foot pounds, and then you go an extra 90 degrees. And these are race studs, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 45. I'm feeling. I'm feeling lucky today. Are you sure? Well, they're 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 stiffer than than the stock by quite a bit. Okay, so same thing. We start in the middle and we work our way out in a in a star pattern. Whatever. I lost them. These are two-year-old studs. What I'm going to do first is kind of go in two passes. I'm going to go down to about 20, then I'll come back and I'll do 40. Okay, 40 foot-pounds. Extra 90 degrees. Oh, yeah, Forward side. All right, and there's two more bolts here, and then I'm breaking for lunch. And these ones, 28 newton meters, 20 foot pounds. Yeah, I barely even tightened it. <laughs> Courtesy quick. I'm going a little more. It just doesn't feel tight enough to me. There we go. All right. So we got the oil pan on. We got the crankshaft in. Bottom half of the crankcase. Pistons, connecting rods, and cylinder head. It's time for lunch. Before I tighten anything down, I'm just going to dry fit the sprocket for the camshaft up here. This arrow needs to be pointing up. It's going to be hard to rotate this when I tighten down these bolts. So I just want to make sure it's roughly in the correct position. Now we'll put together the intake side. We'll start tightening down these rails, just being careful not to tighten any one bolt too far. I want to go little by little. And also keep an eye on the rock arms and make sure they're not hitting the valve at some fun, that valve stem at some funny angle. I forgot to write down the torque for these. It's on my computer, I'll look it up. Forgot to turn the camera on for all that. Did you? Yeah. Oh, well. All right, we got all the head bolts tightened down. Now we'll put the chain and the
timing sprocket and all that stuff on. Starting to have fun here. The way it works is there's three gold teeth on this chain. There's one at the top here and two next to each other at the bottom. The gold teeth are supposed to align with arrow marks on each of the sprockets. But first, first I need to reinstall the guide rails. Make it go over the pin on the bottom here. We can put the plugs back on. A little bit of oil on them. So our, our next fun job is to try to align this. So we've got the gold chain matching the arrow up on top here. And we're going to try to do the same thing on the bottom. Looks like we're pretty close. I just have to uh, rotate the crank just a little bit. Double check that the teeth are still lined up. All right. We'll put the timing tensioner back in. Oh wait, I need to plunge it first. Okay, now we can put it back in. Now we'll crack it again. There it goes. So I'll double check again before I button everything down finally. We're still lined up with the top mark here and with the two bottom marks here. So the engine's in time. So I'm not going to tighten down this camshaft sprocket just yet. I need something to stop the engine from rotating. Now it's time to work on the timing cover. I already put together the oil pump. Do not forget to put these two gaskets, these little round ones here. If you don't put these, you will have no oil pressure. All right, there's two flat spots on the crankshaft. You want to line up the two flat spots on the oil pump gear to line them up. Oh, I need to replace this seal first. I cleaned off the back real good, but I didn't clean off or do anything to the front. I'll pop this old seal out. Super easy. Put the new seal in. It's a lot easier to do it now before putting it on the crankshaft. Like I was saying, we want to line up these uh, flat spots with these two flat spots on the crank. Now that goes right on. That was easy. Sometimes it's off and then you got to rotate the oil pump with your fingers, which is not easy. Put the idler pulley back on. I don't like hammering it on, but there we go. So what I'll do to torque it is I'll uh, I'll put a strap between here and here. All right, so now we have a way to stop in the engine from rotating, so we can torque these two bolts. Okay, 88 for the top. There it goes. The torque value for the dampener pulley is 85 foot-pounds. All right, I think we can put the valve cover on now, which I've already cleaned up. It's starting to look like an engine. All right, that's all for part six.
stay tuned for part 7 when we finish assembling the engine and get ready to put it back in the car. Thanks for watching and bye bye.